So in Edmonton's River Valley on Sundays, you'll find people running around on brooms. They're not Edmonton's Broom Enthusiast Club, though I'm sure there probably is one with the dynamic city that we have, but they're playing Quidditch. If you don't know what that is, it's the magical sport based off the J.K. Rowling Harry Potter books. It's a combination of dodgeball, rugby, handball, and it all comes together in a dynamic sport. <laughs> I'm here to challenge some misconceptions. We do ride around on brooms, but no, we don't fly, despite the picture. Um, the broom is actually a handicap. It's used to you know, make it more difficult to run, tackle, throw, and do everything that you would do in a normal sport, which makes it really dynamic. Um, the hoops you see in the picture are used to score. So the quaffle there, which is a deflated volleyball, is used by three chasers and a keeper. There's those on each team, uh, um, of the seven on a team, and they're, it's very much like handball. You know, simple sport, yeah, okay, what is this Quidditch right now? But the really cool thing about this game is there's a lot of different dynamics which challenge it from other sports. Like beaters, people actively running around and throwing dodgeballs at you. What they do is, just like the books, instead of iron cannonballs, these dodgeballs take you out momentarily in the game. And so, for a spectator and an athlete, you've got multiple different planes going on. So instead of basketball or football where there's one focal point, everything changes. The classic seeker is trying to chase the snitch. Not a golden ball flying around, but actually the ball in a sock behind the snitch runner. The snitch runner, don't laugh. Oh, this guy, if you try to get close, will run, tackle, push, do everything and torture you to try to prevent you grabbing the thing that gets you 30 points and ends the game. How do we identify people? The headbands. White for chasers, black for beaters, green for keepers, and gold for seekers. So pretty much I'm showing you all the hallmarks of what every regular sport has. But the really cool thing about this is, you know, this started out with um, nerds in the eastern United States running around on actual brooms and cloaks. <laughs> so with 21 players on a team and seven at a time, this game has grown internationally. As you can see, Team Canada and Team UK right there. 25 international countries will compete at, yes, the Quidditch World Cup in Germany this summer. But there's a reason it gets so big, and it touches on some of the themes of our other presenters tonight. The inclusivity aspect. There's no other sport that I know that is as inclusive as Quidditch. It's brought nerds to sport, nerds that have never played sports before. It's a gateway drug to sports and a healthy lifestyle. And the community it creates is unbelievable. This is a sport where you're more likely to get a post-game hug from somebody you don't know than a handshake. And this has never died. As the sport's grown, it's really kept that community aspect, which has made it so great and so loving and tight-knit no wherever you go. And also, secondly, note my slides. It's not boys playing with toys, and we go further than co-ed. We're one of the only sports in the world that recognize gender identity. And what that means is that gender identity is respected and embraced as part of our sport. It's a rule that you can only have four of one gender on the pitch at a time. And that, doesn't, that complexity doesn't take away the competitive nature of our sport. It wasn't something that was forced or mandated. It was something that came from the grassroots. It was something that players wanted and was enshrined in our international governing body under something called Title IX and Three Quarters. A pun on Title IX, which was a law in the United States to get rid of uh, discrimination in sports. So it doesn't matter that, it doesn't take away the complexity of the game, as I was saying. Really, it just shows, given the opportunity, no matter what sex, what gender you are, you can all play equally on the same playing field and you can contribute to a dynamic sport, no matter your body makeup, no matter your background, no matter if you have no experience in sports. I started playing with Cynthia here, both of us Harry Potter nerds, um, six years ago. Cynthia never played a sport before. Quidditch was her first. Five years later, she's one of the best beaters in Canada, and she coaches the University of Montreal. And that's just the really cool nature of this sport that's brought so many people into a healthy, active lifestyle, braving the elements. We're out in the snow, the rain, the sun. The sun is great, the snow a little less so, but it's still great. Um, and we're building this sport that just creates such an awesome dynamic that's challenging other sports to rethink what they do about their sport, challenging to think about gender identity, challenging to think about the inclusive nature and bringing people who weren't in sport to sport. And it's grown internationally, as you can see. 
And that tight-knit community I mentioned, if I'm in Victoria, I can just drop in at a practice. If I need a place to stay in the UK, a Quidditch player can hook me up. I'm not advertising an Airbnb service if you join Quidditch. I'm just saying that there is that tight-knit community and exists all around the world even as it's grown. Um, this is Team Canada and I actually on my other side of what I do is I'm the head coach of Team Canada this year. And I've been involved in Team Canada over the past two years. But what's so much cooler than that is seeing the sport grow over the past two years. There are now over 30 teams across the country. And while the U.S. may have 100, they're a little bit bigger. But the point is, it's grown so rapidly in this country, and it's maintained these tight-knit communities that come together. And when we have friends who pass away in Mexico who we don't even know, it still makes a difference to us to show solidarity and come together. So we've come a long way from the makeshift hoops, note the concrete bases, a little dangerous. We've got some fun since there to be a little safer. Oh, and the Harry Potter-esque wooden brooms, which still come out for nostalgia purposes. But we're a little more sleek now with the next photo that will show our really cool jerseys and our real cool brooms. But the thing I'm here to talk about tonight is that no matter the growth of this sport, we've kept the main tenets that make our sport so cool, inclusivity, in encouraging a healthy and active lifestyle, and also really pushing the idea of gender identity in sport. And we've actually forced other sports and sports organizations to rethink how they approach gender identity at the international level and at the Olympic level. So my question is, why have you not joined us in this lovely picture? <laughs> Come talk to me afterwards. I can answer lots of questions. Everybody of all ages can get involved in Quidditch at the Edmonton Oars Quidditch Club. Uh, and if you're too nervous to come talk to me, you can always find somebody running around on their broom on Sundays. So thank you very much.